Hey, we're back. Welcome to episode five of the Outdoors Indoors Show. Hope you had a good half term. At least it wasn't too cold or too wet, and hopefully you got a chance to get outside. So, let's find out what we've got in this week's show, shall we? We've got the left or right game, where we get to ask our guest, do you have a dog? Well, there's a good clue. There's also the Vegetable World Cup, a bird of the week, what's that plant, and lots of other features. There's also some news about the packs you've received from school. So, let's get cracking, shall we? Now I wonder, who came to dinner this week? Hello and welcome to Who's Coming to Dinner. And straight away we're starting at the table with the robin in the hedge. Robin, of course, featured in episode one's Bird of the Week feature. Doesn't stay for long, it's quite a cold day, so he's onto the table, grabs his food and he's gone. Go, lovely Robin. Oh, Blue Tit. Uh, Blue Tit just took a look and didn't want anything and is gone. Oh, I wonder what he's after. Oh, hang on. There he is at the feeder and he's taking a worm and he's gone. Still nice to see the Blue Tit. Very beautiful bird there featuring in this week's Bird of the Week. And Robin again back for two more worms and away he goes. These mealworms really are becoming very popular on the feeder and on the table, of course. Uh, oh, Cold Tit. Oh, quickly gone. And Blue Tit. And um, quickly gone. And both of them took a mealworm and they've gone. So here we go, back up to the table now, and there's a robin again in the hedge. A beautiful bird, um, being very shy, just taking his time, eats and gone. And now we have a house sparrow, there's a house sparrow, following the robin, um, taking his time, in, feeds, out. That's it, no mugging about. And there we go, feeder, robin, in, out, checking it all about. Grabs a bit of food and away to go. Um, Nobody's staying for long. Like I say, it's very cold out there at the moment, as you're all aware. House sparrow, another house sparrow. They didn't even eat. Oh, two more, and they're all eating now. Oh, hang on. And out of nowhere, loads of house sparrows. Featured, of course, in episode two's Bird of the Week. And they're back up to the table now. Let's see what we're going to have up here. We had Robin earlier. But, oh, no, it's the grey squirrel again. Ugh, anyone who saw last week's episode saw... The carnage left behind. I just can't see this. I can't watch this. We're going to go back to the feeder. That's better. Now, what have we got down here? Oh, uh, Robin again. Lovely. Uh, Robin from episode one. And House Sparrow from episode two, of course. Uh, beautiful House Sparrow. The Robin eating the worms. The House Sparrow eating the seeds. And there's a, still a sparrow there. And there he's gone. Lovely there. Uh, uh, back to the table again. And the squirrel... They just don't stop, do they? I mean, this one in particular, look at the size of him. I mean, he's definitely warm. He'll be having a little itch there. Uh, he'll be fine over winter. Of that, there's no doubt. And the way he's eating his way through the sewer pellets makes you think he'll probably be all right for next winter, too. Uh, they oh, hello. Uh, and he's coming for his close-up. Uh, I wonder if he knows the camera's there. Um... He really is showing off, isn't he? Um, you can see the ears there of the grey squirrels are much smaller than the red squirrel, of course. Uh, less fluffy. Uh, now, this one really is enjoying those sewer pellets. He's treating it like candy. I mean, look at this. It's like he's at the sweet shop. Uh, I do hope he doesn't tell his friends. Um, off you go now, squirrel, please. Those are for the birds. Although we don't mind seeing you in the garden, he really would prefer to feed the birds. And there you go, he's off. Well, goodness, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's who came to dinner this week. Now, I always thought that feature was about birds, but every week there's more and more squirrels. Hmm. Now, let's find out. What's that plant? Tomatoes. Tomatoes originally came from South and Central America and were first brought to Europe in the mid-1500s. Their original Aztec name means plump thing with a belly button. The first tomatoes in Europe may well have been of the yellow varieties, and they were called Pomodoro, meaning golden apple. Tomatoes are very popular in Mediterranean cuisine, such as Italian food where tomatoes are a key ingredient in pizza and pasta sauces. The tomato can be eaten in many different ways, raw like a fruit, processed into ketchup or soup, or even as a juice drink. 
there are around 10,000 varieties of tomatoes, and although they are considered vegetables by nutritionists, they are, in fact, fruits. There is no mention of tomatoes in the complete works of Shakespeare, but their seedlings have been grown in space. Tomato. Ooh, now it's time for our new and exciting feature. So, this week you've received a pack from school and inside it is this. And so today, we are proud to launch the Tomato Tournaments. Here we go, the Tomato Tournaments start here. There are loads of ways to win. Grow the most tomatoes, grow the biggest tomatoes, grow the tallest, grow the prettiest, grow the funniest. Just go crazy and grow tomatoes. If you're going to grow tomatoes, you'll need some kit. You need a pot, you need a compost pellet, and you need tomato seeds. You should find all of these in the packs from school. Everything else you might need is very simple to get hold of. Now, we're going to be growing a variety of tomato called Tiny Tim. They grow to about 40 centimetres high and can easily be grown in a pot on a windowsill. So you don't need a garden or a greenhouse, you just need a windowsill which gets sunlight. Your plant will need some care and attention and you'll need just a little bit of patience. Hopefully you'll end up with lots and lots of bright red cherry tomatoes about 3 centimetres in diameter that are perfect for eating like sweets. I'll be showing you some special recipes on how to use them too, including a very special secret recipe from Mr Tarketti. So, let's get cracking, shall we? They're not going to grow while the seeds are in the packet, are they? First of all, take your pot and half fill it with clean water. Next, you're going to break up your compost pellet and pop it into the water which is in the pot. Leave the packet of seeds somewhere safe, because you'll need those later. Now, that was easy, wasn't it? The next bit is even easier. Go and do something else for 20 minutes. Have a go at Miss Yellen's 30 second challenges. Read a chapter of a book. Practice TT rock stars. Or go and make a crest head. After about 20 minutes, the water will have soaked into the compost pellet and it should look something like this. If it's very dry, just add a little bit more water, but not too much. You don't want it to be soggy. It will have expanded to fill the whole pot just like this. Now, do you remember those seeds? Well, now it's seed planting time. Yeehaw! So, tear off the top of the packet and pour out your seeds onto a piece of paper or into a bowl. Now, look at all those seeds. Wow, there's got to be a hundred seeds there. What we're going to do is take about six of those seeds and plant them into our compost. Keep the rest of the seeds safely in the packet and I'll show you some other ways to grow seeds in the upcoming Outdoors Indoor shows. Now, those seeds only need to be planted about two centimetres deep in our compost. So I'm going to use my trusty pencil. Just pop the end into the soil to make six holes. Then drop a seed into each of the holes and cover them up with compost. All you need to do is to show these seeds some care and attention and they will provide you with some of the best tomatoes you've ever tasted. They always taste so much better when you've grown them yourself. Now, take your pot and put it on a windowsill, avoiding any radiators because that will be too hot for our tomatoes. Now water them very carefully. Tomatoes don't like to have their roots in really wet soil, so the best thing to do is to check the surface a couple of times a day, and if it feels dry, give your plant a little bit of water. And I do mean only a little bit. I'll keep you updated on the Outdoors Indoor Show as to what to do next. But congratulations! You've started to grow your own tomatoes, and you can compete in the Tomato Tournaments! So we're all going to be growing tomatoes now and over the coming weeks and months I'll let you know about the different competitions and tournaments you can enter. So get growing! Next, it's Bird of the Week. The Blue Tit. 
A colourful mix of blue, yellow, white and green makes the blue tit one of our most attractive and most recognisable garden visitors. In winter, family flocks join up with other tits as they search for food. Blue tits eat insects, caterpillars, seeds and nuts and they usually nest in tree holes, although they easily adapt to nest boxes where necessary. Their main rival for nests and in the search for food is the larger and more common great tit. Some 98% of British gardens report seeing blue tits in winter. Although the blue tit's world range extends to North Africa and Turkey, it is considered a European bird, unlike the far more widespread great tit. For centuries, the blue tit was known as the titmouse, but they have also collected many regional nicknames too. In Hampshire, they are called a yawp, in the Midlands, a Billy Biter, in the West Country, a Hecky Marl, and in Cornwall, a Tree Babbler. The Blue Tit. Such a beautiful bird. Now, last week, there was an own goal from a broad bean, there was a disallowed goal from a red kidney bean, and a last minute winner from the refried bean. Whatever next? It's the Vegetable World Cup. Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the third match from the 2021 Vegetable World Cup. And it's a repeat of last year's incredible semi-final. On that occasion, Onions run out winners with a dramatic last minute penalty. So tonight we've got two of the best strikers in the game, Onion Rings and Mushy Peas. And two of the best defenders in the world, Spring Onions and Frozen Peas. It's the match we've all been waiting for. Two teams who really don't like each other. It's Peas against Onions with Jeff and Terry. Uh, sorry, Jeff, but Terry had to go home. So it's uh, me, Jeff. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. And hopefully we'll have another classic match here at the 2021 Vegetable World Cup. With no further ado, the teams are on the pitch. The referee's ready and we're off. I'm really looking forward to this one, Jeff. Tell me about it, Jeff. These two teams hate each other, especially after last year's semi-final. But really, they're very similar. They both play 4-4-2. They're both desperate to win. They're peas in the pod. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, my goodness, Jeff. Did you see that? A disgusting tackle there by Spring Onions on Mushy Peas. And he's going to be in trouble here, Jeff. The referee's going for his pocket. And oh, it's a red. Two minutes into the game and Onions are a vegetable down. I'm not surprised he's been sent off, Jeff. Look at the replay. He's practically juiced the mushy peas. Looks more like soup now. That's a disgrace. Well, there's no point crying over sliced onions. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the juicy garden pea that takes the free kick and it drifts into the box. And there it is, the first goal with a wonderful header from the mushy peas. Clinical, Jeff. 1-0. I think it's going to be a long night for the red onion in goal. So the onions kick off and straight away the ball's given away. Onion rings really don't look on their game tonight, do they, Jeff? Quite agree, Jeff. I mean, he's got no pace. Just a target man, and that's Shalot. Sorry, Jeff, but Shalot's playing left back. <laughs> oh, dear <laughs> me. <laughs> and the macho peas are off on a run straight out the middle of the pitch and pass into Mushy Peas for the second goal. And what an assist for the macho peas there. 2-0, and you've got a feel for that red onion in goal. I mean, he had no chance. Where was the defence? Onion just went to sleep then. It's the fans I feel sorry for, Jeff. Some of them are to come a long way tonight, and this is embarrassing. Jeff, all I am saying is if you give Peas a chance, they will score. Very good, Jeff, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just before half time, and with the last attack of the half, and an absolute beauty from Mushy Peas, and that's a hat trick with one of the best goals I've ever seen. Wow. I've seen a lot of vegetable over the years, Jeff, but I've never seen anything like that. I'm glad Teddy had to go home now. So that's 3 0 as we go into the half time break. Goodness me. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll all agree that was a superb half of vegetable and mushy peas have certainly set this tournament alight this evening. Back for the second half, Jeff. 
Well, straight away there's a substitution, and on come the Black Eyed Peas. Well, Jeff, I got a feeling that tonight's going to be a good, good night for peas. <laughs> nice one. Well, they're already 3-0 up, playing against a team missing their most important player. I think we can safely say that peas are through. Yeah, you're absolutely right, especially if... Oh my goodness me, the Petit Pois just produced a piece of absolute magic and it's 4-0 to Peas. It's over. So it's 4-0 to Peas. The Onion is showing nothing tonight. The Monster Munch, Transformer Snacks and Space Raiders have already touched a ball and the Pickled Onion and Onion Gravy have been a huge disappointment at the back. Nothing really happening here, Jeff, is there? I'll pop off and get me fish and chips to celebrate with mushy peas after the game, if you know what I mean. Yes, I do, Jeff. Once again, what a great idea. I'll have a fish cake and medium chips with no salt. Cheer. Well, it looks like this game is slowly fizzling out, Jeff. Onions well and truly beaten, and peas taking it easy before their next match against one of the big guns in the competition. Cauliflower or cucumber? 4-0, and I think we're done here. Ta-da, Jeff! Uh, excuse me, Jeff, uh, where are you going? There's still 20 minutes left to play. Well, Jeff has just come back with my fish, cake and chip, but I want to catch mushy peas while they're still hot, so ta-da! Peas are through to the next round. Right, oh, uh, well, that, that looks like that's it, folks. Uh, until next time, when it'll be cauliflower versus cucumber uh, in the 2021 Vegetable World Cup. So it's uh, goodbye from me, Jeff. Goodbye. Here's this week's recommendations. The great big art exhibition is still going on, and now the theme has moved on to portraits. So, paint, photograph, draw, or collage a picture of yourself or someone else and stick it in your window. Next, I want to recommend the Blue Peter website. A Blue Peter is a TV show that's been going for about 62 years now, and they've got loads of things to do on their website. There's loads of videos and games and songs and makes. And you can even earn yourself one of the world famous Blue Peter badges. And finally, and the biggest recommendation of all, is you must keep visiting the Winton Primary School website. It's a great place to see what all the staff are up to and what your friends are doing too. There's Mr Miller's PE Shed, Miss Yellen's 30 Second Challenges, the Home Learning and Assembly sections and the blog posts. And I especially enjoyed the David Attenborough impression last week. So that's this week's recommendations. And finally for this episode of the Outdoors Indoors show, it's the left or right game, where we get to ask the question, do you have a dog? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Left or Right Game. And this week's special guest is Mr. Wallace. How are you Hi, today? Everyone. I'm very well. I'm a big fan of the show, so it's an honour to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Fantastic. We're going to have a quick look at the rules and then we'll play the game. The rules for the Left or Right Game are as follows. You've got 90 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. Don't worry, there's no wrong answers. It's just for fun. Good luck. <clears throat> so, does that all make sense? It does. Fantastic. In that case, I'm going to put 90 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's play. Left or right? Right. Treble clef or bass clef? Hmm, bass clef. Waffles or pancakes? Hmm, pancakes. Toast or cereal? Toast. Wallace or Gromit? Wallace. Do you have a dog? A big fat dog. Do you have a rabbit or a cat? No, no, no. <laughs> Brilliant. Are you Grande <laughs> or Lady Gaga? Oh, definitely Gaga. Burgers or sausages? Burgers. Blue Peter or Horrell Histories? Blue Peter. Fried or scrambled? Mm, fried. Air guitar or air drums? Air guitar every day. Very good. Salt or pepper? Salt. Peas or sweet corn? Mm, sweet corn. Guess who or connect four? 
Ooh, guess who? Millennium Falcon or Death Star? Oh, that's a tough one. It's got to be Death Star. Darth Vader or Mr. Bean? Darth Vader. Jumping jacks or squats? <laughs> uh, squats. Why Can not? you show me, please, Mr. Wallace? <laughs> Star Wars, by the way. <laughs> Baseball cap or beanie? Beanie. Lego movie or Lego Batman? Lego Batman. Brilliant. Monopoly or Cluedo? Oh, and that's your time, Mr. Wallace, I'm afraid. That's your time. It's Monopoly, by the way. Definitely Monopoly. It's Monopoly. Thank you very much. <laughs> In your 90 seconds, you scored 20 points. Which puts you in sixth place. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for playing the left or right game, Mr. Wallace. And we'll see who's going to be next time. For now, bye-bye. <laughs>Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed it. Now, don't forget to keep sending your photos to the home learning email address. And also, if you've missed any of the Outdoors Indoor shows, you can have a look at them on the school website, they're all there. So, until the next time, cheerio!